Why do birds fly south for the winter? Because it's a lot easier and quicker than walking. Folks, welcome to This Week in History and Happy New Year. And of course, right up front, we want to go ahead and thank our patrons, Steve Stevens, Clayton Jaimez, The Hayes Family, Patrick Freeman, and Mark Ben Griffin. We appreciate you guys' support, and we appreciate the support from all of you through liking, commenting, sharing, all that good stuff. And while I'm talking about it, don't forget to like, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, because believe it or not, telling someone to like and subscribe actually makes it more likely for them to like and subscribe. Darndest thing. Anyway, if you want to help us out a little bit more, you can check out the link to our Patreon down in the description below. And now let's get this puppy going. On January 2nd in 1492, the 781 year long Reconquista more or less came to an end when the Emirate of Granada, the last Moorish stronghold on the Iberian Peninsula, surrendered to the united forces of Aragon, Leon, and Castile, also ending the 10 year Granada War. Now, some of you may be wondering what a Moor is. It's when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. No, no, wait, that's a more. Moors were Muslims from Northern Africa. In 1791, the Big Bottom Massacre occurred in the Ohio country with attacking Lenape and Wyandotte warriors killing 14 settlers and capturing three more. This occurred early in the Northwest Indian War. On January 3rd in 1868, the Tokugawa Shogunate was abolished and the Shogun Tokugawa Yashinobi was stripped of all power. What followed was the Meiji Restoration, a push towards imperialization and westernization in Japan. This followed the end of the isolationist policies of Sokoku, which you can learn more about by clicking the eye up there. On January 4th in 1717, the Netherlands, Great Britain, and France signed the Triple Alliance in an attempt to maintain the Treaty of Utrecht, which had previously ended the War of Spanish Succession. Yes, we did a video on that war as well. The agreement between the countries was also made in order to check Spain's growing power. The next year, the Holy Roman Empire would also sign on, and later came the War of the Quadruple Alliance. On January 5th, 1914, the Ford Motor Company announced an eight-hour workday and minimum daily wage of $5 and salary plus bonuses. And for those of you wondering, adjusted for inflation, $5 in 1914 14 would be about $135 today. On January 6th in 1066, following the death of Edward the Confessor on the previous day, the Watan or Council of Wise Men met to confirm Harold Godwinson as the new King of England. Harold was crowned later that day, creating a succession crisis that would eventually lead to the Norman invasion and conquest of England. And that brings us to... Oh, 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 crown, crown, lightning lightning round. Round. In 1205, Philip of Swabia was coronated as King of the Romans for the second time. In 1322, Stephen Euros III was crowned King of Serbia, with his son also being crowned Young King in the same ceremony. In 1355, Charles IV of Bohemia was crowned with the Iron Crown of Lombardy as King of Italy, and in 1449, Constantine XI was crowned as the final Byzantine and technically Roman Emperor. On January 7th and 1610, Galileo Galileo Galilei made the first observation of the four Galilean moons, Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa. These were the first of Jupiter's 80 known moons to be discovered and the first moons observed in our solar system other than our own. In 1904, the distress signal CQD was established only to be replaced two years later with SOS. CQ was used due to it sounding like the beginning of the French, Securite, meaning security, and was the code for a general call to anyone listening. The D was for distress. On January 8th in 1811, the German Coast Uprising of 1811, which is the largest slave revolt in U.S. history, began in Orleans Territory, today known as Louisiana. It began with a group overthrowing their plantation, then marching south towards New Orleans, burning plantations along the way, while also picking up members before being defeated by local militia. Afterward, with 
the help of native trackers and hunting dogs, they were able to track down many of the slaves, with an estimated 95 of them being either killed in battle or being tried, executed, and their heads displayed on pikes as a warning. The supposed leader of the revolt, Charles de Londe, was captured and without trial had his hands cut off, his legs shot until the bones were broken, then he was shot a few more times in the body before finally being burned alive. Yeah, and that's just gonna about do it for this week, but we'll see you back here next week. Same Squirrel time, same Squirrel channel. Be happy, be healthy, and y'all have a happy new year. <laughs>